Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how the ELISA test uses antibodies to quantify the level of a protein. And this is for the AQA specification. OK, now often in biology, we need to determine the quantity of a protein. For example, we might need to determine the level of an antigen in the blood. And the ELISA test allows us to do this. ELISA stands for Enzyme-Linked Immunosorbent Assay. I'm going to explain to you how the ELISA test works, and you need to learn the stages. ELISA tests are often carried out using plastic plates like this one. This has a number of small wells, and each well will be used to analyse one sample. So this allows us to analyse a large number of samples in one go. I'm showing you here a close-up of one of the wells on the plate. First, we apply our sample, which contains the antigen, to the well. The material on the bottom of the well is designed so that the antigen molecules stick. We then wash the well several times. This is to remove any antigen molecules that did not stick. Next, we add an antibody which is specific for our antigen. We now wait to allow the antibody molecules to stick to the antigen molecules. Next, we wash again to remove any excess antibody molecules. Now we add a second antibody. This antibody has two features. First, the second antibody specifically binds to the first antibody. Secondly, the second antibody is attached to an enzyme molecule. We now wait to allow the second antibody to bind with the first antibody. Next, we wash again to remove any unbound second antibody. Now we add the substrate for the enzyme. This substrate is normally a colourless molecule. The enzyme converts the substrate into a product molecule which is coloured. Normally the ELISA is read after a fixed amount of time, and the intensity of the colour produced depends on the number of enzyme molecules, which in turn depends on the number of antigen molecules present. So the intensity of the colour can be used to determine the amount of antigen, and this makes the ELISA a quantitative test. Now generally when carrying out an ELISA, we use a number of different dilutions of our sample. This is because we want all of our antigen molecules to stick to the plate. If our sample contains a very high level of antigen, then the well may be overloaded, and some of the antigen molecules may not stick. This would mean that the ELISA would not give us an accurate value for the quantity of antigen. By carrying out a range of dilutions of our sample, we overcome this problem. I'm showing you an ELISA plate here, and we can see the colour developing in the wells. Now in practice, ELISA tests are often automated, allowing a very large number of samples to be read accurately. This makes ELISA a valuable method, for example for testing for infectious diseases such as HIV. OK, so hopefully now you can describe the ELISA test. 